Hi guys, it's Pete from MyJuryBench.com. Welcome to part two of the Elegoo Mars versus the Epix X1 resin printer challenge. I'm gonna show you how to print these two rings. We're gonna do two rings on each printer with the same resin, pretty much the same settings based on the recommendations from the manufacturer. Let's get started. So what I'm doing today is I'm going to do a battle part two. This is this is the Elagoo Mars versus the Epix X1 printer. And I know some of you guys think they're exactly the same, but there's a, there's a few differences on the inside, and we're going to go into that a little more detail later. But right now, part two of our battle of the two printers, what I'm going to do is just basically go through these rings here. I'm going to print them in the fun-to-do castable resin, which I've used. It works pretty good. Um, this is a brand new bottle, so we're going to open it up. We're going to test this out. I've never used it with either of these two printers, so we're going to give this a shot. In my slicer settings for the Elegoo Mars. So we've got our Elegoo Mars here. We've got our fun to do resin. I'm printing on that machine here, just like this. The resin, um, 99 bucks a liter. That's pretty typical for a castable resin. I'm doing a 0.05 millimeter X height, um, bottom layer 5 counts, 15 seconds are the recommendations from the manufacturer with a 65 count bottom or 50, a 65 second bottom layer exposure time. The infill, we've got solid and our uh, anti-aliasing is on 2. So I'm going to save that. Uh, now let's go to our settings for the epics and we're going to Oops, yeah, so let's do that again. On the Epics, we're gonna do the exact same recommendations from the manufacturer for this particular printer. So we're gonna cancel that if I can. Stand Resin Plus. Let's change that over to Fun to Do Castable Resin. And our machine, Epix One. Uh, let's see, let's change that to $99 per liter. This printer, um, we are getting a 12 second exposure time. Bottom layer count, we're gonna do five. We're gonna change that to 65 seconds. And infill, solid. And our advanced settings, anti-aliasing, we're gonna do two on that. Let's slice this up. <clears throat> There's our slicer. Let's save it. And I don't have this hooked up. Fun to do cast. And we will save this out to the no name, which is my USB stick for my Epix X1. Okay, let's get started, guys. Okay, so here I have a brand new bottle of the uh, castable resin. This is in red. It is a waxy resin. It uh, comes highly recommended, and I've used this with some other printers, but not for these two printers, so we're going to see how well it works. I'm just going to open this up. We're going to give it a shake and uh, get it set up in our printers. So one thing I always like to do before I throw the resin into the vat is I usually just wipe down the inside of the vats. I use some glass cleaner and a cotton cloth and we'll just give it a quick wipe down for both of them. This allows me to make sure that I'm not going to get any resin sticking to the FEP film or in the uh, X1's case, the non-FEP film. So again with the uh, Elegoo Mars, uh, the difference between the Elegoo Mars and the Epix X1 you do have to align your build plate every time, or you should align it every time you set up for a print. The uh, X1 comes factory set up, so you'll never have to touch that one, which is really nice. Uh, unless you loosen up the screws or have a little accident, you should never need to touch that. It, it, it does come very well set up from the factory. I've never adjusted it myself. The Elegoo Mars, on the other hand, I do align my build plate before I do any print that way I know when I take the build 
off the build plate and I'm probably going to mess up the alignment. I always get it set up the next time. So with the build plate aligned and I'm just going to raise the bed up, shake the bottle. I've already shaken it, but I'm just shaking it here a little bit more. You should shake these for about a minute or so if you've never used them before and uh, and get ready to filter it when you pour it into your vats. Safety is always important, guys. Now, I don't have as many problems with resin as some people do. I've never been burned. I've never had any chemical problems. I have more problems with isopropyl alcohol on my skin than I do the resin. But uh, wear gloves. Use a mask if it bothers you uh, just to protect yourself. Some people have gotten second and third degree burns from the resins, and you should always protect yourself. Here you can see uh, I'm pouring the resin through a filter. Um, something I always do with my castable resins especially is I will pre-filter them before they go into the vat. That way if there's any particles inside, I'm pretty much protected that I'm going to cause any damage to the FEP film or crack a display or have little hard particles get into my, my printer vat. And once you're done, dispose of all the uh, waste material properly. Don't throw any resin down the drain. You don't want that in the water supply. Don't throw it in your yard. Get rid of all this stuff safely. And of course, no matter what you do, always wipe down the bottleneck before you put the cap on. That way you don't get any resin drying the cap to the bottle. I've had some caps stick once in a while and that's never fun. Now let's get these prints started. So first I'm going to do is uh, follow this firmware and you're just going to hit the print button and then the down arrow until you find the last print you want to print and I am going to find the one I want there. We're going to select it on both printers. Once it's selected we're going to start both printers and see which one uh, gives me the best time. Now the slicer have already found out that the uh, Elegoo Mars is going to print roughly 20 minutes 30 minutes faster i think it actually printed almost an hour faster which was pretty impressive um, i've gotten good results with this resin and uh, the epix x1 printer i will go through those in one of the next videos when i give you the full review of this resin So about an hour and 20 minutes later, I came in to check the prints and make sure they were printing good. And I'm just going to pause them and take a look at what's going on here. Check the prints out. If I've got any failures, this is a good time to find out so I can cancel the prints and start over. But as you can see, my prints are doing very well. Um, not concerned yet. I haven't seen any results. We've got the bottom half of the rings coming on the, the X1. And looks like our Elegoo is not too far behind. Okay, so the prints are done. This is a few hours later, and I came in, and you can see it's dark outside looking through the windows. We're going to pull these prints off the uh, build plates this is very flexible resin so uh, because it has a lot of wax content the, the resin prints are going to be a little bit on the flexible side so if you're using this castable resin you want to be a little cautious with it you can see they, they bend pretty easy um, they do come off the build plate really well if you follow those settings and i've actually got some better settings coming in the full review of this this resin again we're just going to pull the uh, the prints off of the Elegoo Mars now and I'm doing the same process just cleaning everything up and I like to wipe it down before I pull the prints off just in case I don't want to drip any resin anywhere and of course with any resin printer you always have the cleanup time so allot yourself like five minutes to clean up both printers if you have just one I can do mine in about two or three minutes get the build plate cleaned up empty out the vat clean it all up this process goes pretty quick and I always recommend cleaning up after a print. If you are going to print some more, you can leave the resin in there for about a day or two. Um, but you really want to be careful because the, the resin will start to coagulate a little bit. So if you're not going to print for a couple of days, it's always a good idea just to clean up 
get everything ready for the next time you do print. And those are the steps I follow just about after every print I do anyhow. Okay, so I don't really want to bore you with the cleaning and everything, but uh, just to know I, I rinse these off in isopropyl alcohol and then I throw them in the ultrasonic cleaner. After that, it's time for a UV uh, shower. So I'll stick them in the UV lamp and let them cure for about 10-15 minutes. And now let's do a comparison. Okay, so looking at the Elegoo Mars printouts, we can see that they printed out fairly well. Um, you know, you're gonna you're gonna notice something. I had a an error in my print in my 3D model, and what happened was it resulted in this little solid hole here. And sadly, I have to be able to get rid of that now. But I can do that in post production and just cut that out with a Dremel. Um, I'm gonna fix that print and try this again and see how my results are before I send this off for casting. But uh, it came out pretty good. I'm not, um, I'm not sorry that I use both printers, but uh, I'm just going to compare these two. This right here in my left hand is the Epax, and if we do the comparison, you'll notice there's very little difference. Um, I did get a 15% faster print. Uh, they print. Printout came out pretty good. I, I think the if you look very very closely under the microscope, um, one detail in this printing them both at the same level is that they they printed almost identical. There's very little difference. Um, I'm using Sheet Two Box 1.6, which just came out yesterday, and it gives me better supports. But I didn't anticipate the supports that I was going to get on these prints to be what they are and let me just see if I can pull them off pull off the Elegoo version they're gonna take some cutting they're pretty beefy I might have been able to get away with some lightweight supports but I used medium on this because I was a little worried but let's see we got very good prong shape with very good prong distance and it's the same on the epics they came out just about perfect I like that and with the exception of the air that resulted in a solid surface uh, <laughs> instead of having a hole in it I think I could get a better version this resin is a this has a lot of wax content so the fun to go resin um, it actually burns out real well and and it doesn't cause a lot of uh, gas buildup while you're uh, melting it out of your investment. So this stuff is really nice, and it beats the fact that you know two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar resins, which I've used. This stuff I've used in the past works really well. I'm going to reprint these and and give this a shot at uh, a fixed model instead of the ones I'm using here. But I'm pretty happy with both of these. You know, a lot of you guys, I know you guys have been commenting in my in my videos about the uh, Epax X1 and the Elegoo Mars being the exact same printer. Well, they're really not. There is differences in the UV lamp and the, uh, the driver for the UV lamp. And also, the reason I got the Epax or the Epix X1 was that it can be upgraded with the, uh, the UV lamp that really works better for... Uh, dental and jewelry resins so that's part of what's coming up we're going to be doing an upgrade to that and I'm going to show you the differences between the uh, Elegoo Mars and the Epix uh, X1 I can't speak definitely for the uh, Elegoo Mars P version the pro version which they say is coming out I don't know if it's pro or not but uh, that's supposed to have a better lamp and uh, we're gonna wait and see how uh, that tallies up to the Epix when it comes out, but I, I anticipate it'll be very similar to the Epix or Epix X1 printer when it comes out. The Epix is just a little bit ahead of the Elegoo Mars. Now, not to say that the Elegoo Mars is not a good printer. You can see, obviously, uh, my jewelry prints for this, especially with this castable resin. Um, this is a heavy wax resin, really worked well. I'm not fond of the darker resins. 
uh, with either of these two printers or the Anycubic. So keep that in mind. But as far as battle tested, I definitely got about 15, 18% faster print out of the, the X1 than I did the Mars. So keep that in mind. Again, we don't know what the new Mars is going to be like until it comes out. So I will show you when I take these two printers apart this week. I will take some pictures of the insides and do a comparison. But uh, print battle with the castable resin. Uh, battle 2. I'd say other than the fact that the Epic's printed faster, I got really good prints out of this. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks guys for taking the time to watch some of my videos, I really appreciate it. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see new stuff that I put out, usually on a weekly basis, hit the subscribe button and you can get notified by clicking on that little bell. I really appreciate any uh, sharing that you can do and the thumbs up that I get if you like these videos kind of helps with uh, my channel to grow. You'll see that in the descriptions and on my website I do put affiliate links to products that I show and use in these videos. Those affiliate links uh, give me a little small commission, doesn't cost you anything if you buy them. And when you buy within the first 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a tiny little commission that helps keep this channel going. Any little bit helps to keep this up and running. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up and share on social media. Take care guys, happy watchmaking and jewelry making.